That's Showtime at Hope's in Miami. Andre Clarenhouse gets out the line, steals it, and the Indy 250. Oh, Gordon, the back is in trouble, let it go. Gordon to the wall, jumps right around. Side by side on the final lap, coming to the checkered flag. Steve Morgan, the last oh, lap pass, yeah. and the victory in Las Vegas. Welcome to the NOF SRL. Memorial Day, our most solemn of holidays. It's the day we honor the fallen victims from the military. But two days before Memorial Day, we celebrate our military with the longest race the New Era Cup Series has this year, the Coca-Cola 600 from the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mario Sakala. Glad you could all join us for round number 13 of the New Era Cup Series. Thank you to all of our essential workers and first responders doing a great job during these tough times. I'm joined alongside in the booth by Bradley Ream. Bradley, 150 grueling miles around the 1.5 mile quad oval. This is going to be a long one today. How important will patience be in the ultimate test of endurance? It's gonna be really important. You just have to handle your car well and you just gotta stay out of trouble and patience is key. When you're getting around a person, you gotta make sure you have a good line, you don't mess up. And mainly patience, you want patience here. It's a lot of miles and laps that will be held here tonight in the Coca-Cola 600. Absolutely, it's gonna be a good one. Last week, if you missed us during the All-Star Race, Eric Monaco took home the win and got himself a spot in next season's new era cup series we're going to show you how the point standings look in playoff format once we complete this race today we will be done with the first half of the regular season we've had 10 different winners so far this season cj williams currently has a 19 point lead and he's in a situation after being in the points lead for about a month now where he could lose that lead today to Diego Rossello. As we look at the bubble counter right now, it's pretty close, especially in the battle for 14. Steve Morgan currently five points above the cutoff there. Carter Friesen two points above the cutoff, and his teammate Daniel Boyles currently up by a single point. Eric Monaco one point back in 17th, Edward Mendez in 18th, he's three back, and Matthew Logan in 19th for back. Let's give you the starting lineup for the 600. In row number 20, Brian Webb, the winner from two weeks ago at Martinsville, Nathan Stapleton next to him. Row number 19, it's the 95 of Matt Tuck in the red, white, and blue ring scheme. Points leader, CJ Williams, next to him. Row 18, Patrick Smith in the 94. Teammate Tristan Allen makes his first start this season in a while. Row 17, Ethan Lewis makes his cup debut, same with Graydon Perez. Row number 16, Daniel Voyles in the 47 has the final chase spot, or playoff spot rather. Eagle Barreto Oswego winner next to him. Row 15, Carter Freeds and Voyles' his teammate, and Jonathan Logan to his inside. Row number 14, currently second in the standings, Diego Rossello, and the defending champion of the series, Steve Morgan. Row 13, Neil Clifford in the 53, Zachary, Zachary Fitzwater in the four car. He stands seventh in the point standings. Row number 12, Derek Camel in the 32, two time winner, Brian Ferris in the 20. Row number 11, Eli Bright in the 8, and Vegas winner, Tyler Marco next to him. Row 10, All Star winner, Eric Monaco, John Andrews in the 17. Row 9, Edward Mendez and Stuart Gray in the season 30 champion. 
Row number 8, Gatlin Downey and Ethan Hoffman in the 18. Looking through the rest of the grid, we've got Casey Nanico and Colin Denton, Justin Zaidel, Christian Vargas. And now your top 10, starting 10th, Alex Lozano, 9th is Benny Watson, 8th, Luke Rainey, 7th, Jesse Turner for the Air Force, starting 6th, Mitchell Collins, 5th is Cody Smart, 4th, Matthew Logan, and how about your top 3, all from the same team, a Penske 1, 2, 3. Starting third, Johnny Garner. In second, Zach Ryan. And on the pole, Marty Johnson. Let's roll them all off. 100 laps today around the Charlotte Motor Speedway. 150 miles only time the Cup Series goes 150 this season. There will be four stages as well instead of three. The stages will end every 25 laps as all the cars roll off smoothly. The fuel window about 30 to 35 laps, so this could be a 2 to 3 stop race. If this is a caution free race, which I don't think it will be, this, would, this could possibly be a fuel mileage race. So Bradley Ream, it's your first time in the booth. By the way, our second take, doing the 600 after yesterday we had some technical difficulties. Who do you got winning it all? Oh, I think we lost Bradley. Hello? Oh, you're still there. Okay, we got you. So who do you think is going to win it? I think it's going to be the 38 of Benny Watson um, in the Shriners Hospital Ford Mustang. The front row motorsports get putting in it, the Ford in victory lane tonight, winning the Coca-Cola 600. He starts in ninth, but it's going to be a good one. It's a Penske front row, both red, white, and blue on Memorial Day weekend. Marty Johnson, Zach Ryan bring the field to green, and it's time to light them up in America's home for racing. Here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, it's showtime! Two by two going into turn number one. Ryan just getting the advantage on the outside, but Johnson not giving up, getting the push from fellow teammate Johnny Garner and good friend as well. Johnson's got the advantage off of turn two as they go down the back stretch for the first time today. You'll see them all in this even pack for right now, but once we get into a longer run, they will be spread out. Garner takes second spot away. Ryan and Smart battle for third position, but Marty Johnson with the commanding lead leads lap number one of the Coca-Cola 600. Coming into turn number one is Marty Johnson. He has a gap. The 22 goes high on in the track, and here comes the 10 of Cody Smart passing Johnny Gardner for second on the back straight away. Cody Smart looking to have a better second half than this first half in the regular season. It's been terrible. Outside the top 30, no wins. Here comes as well Jesse Turner. He knows how to win at quad oval racetracks. The Texas Motor Speedway won in that photo finish over Ryan Benjamin. They're side by side for third position. Smart gets a little bit tight up in one and two. That will open the door for Turner to try and take that runner-up spot away. They come into turn number four, I mean, three and four. There, Marty Johnson still with the lead. As you can see, a huge battle for I believe what is third. Benny Watson, Cody Smart, Jesse Turner, and Johnny Garner, and the 0-0 Christian Vargas all battling for position. And right now it's the 43. Fucking the 0-0 is both getting a spot. Vargas taking the fourth position away as Watson and Garner battle for that top five spot. We'll take you from the aerial shot here. Early on, these drivers are just being a little patient here, trying to stay single file, don't want to make any... Risky moves. In our first take, they were going two and three wide. We did have some long green flag runs, but around halfway through the race, we had a big wreck that took out 21 cars. Here's a challenge for second. Turner and Vargas look underneath on Smart. Does the double zero take it three wide down the back? We'll have to wait and see. He does not, but Benny Watson riding in fifth position, being safe. For right now. Meanwhile, Marty Johnson continues to lead. He's led all five laps so far in this going. I know it's early on, but Johnson's got a pretty good car to show for it at the moment. But we got to focus on that battle of second. Five cars put them all under a blanket. You got three wide for about the eighth position between John Andrews, Ethan Hoffman, 
and Johnny Garner. Luke Rainey in the mix as well. Let's take you on board with the 15. Johnny Garner on the outside line. He's losing a couple of spots here. And we're on board with the 15, as you can see. The 22 and the 34, as well as the 50, 51, maybe the 52, I believe. Right in behind him. Watson Vargas battle it out for the second position. Benny Watson won the open last week. He was able to get the final transfer spot before the All-Star race. Well, not really the final transfer spot. The final transfer spot really was a fan vote. That was won by Jacob Britz in the 16 car. Here comes Cody Smart inside on Watson for the second position. Let's see if the 10 can make it stick. Andrews, Rainey, and Turner have entered this battle as well. Let's take you on board once again with the 15. He's drafting with the 17 of, I believe, that is... Uh, That's Bobby. John Andrews, who's currently running in the fourth position. Andrews, this man has had bad luck his entire New Era Cup Series career. Currently running, and yellows out, yellows out, apologies. It's for the 51. Casey Nanico brings out the first caution in the 600. And it looks like it was a solo car spin that happened off of turn number two. So it's Calamity Corner. Once again, the All-Star Race, which was a previous... Uh, layout, uh, well not really layout but a previous uh, tr uh, version which saw over 200 miles an hour of racing, packs, low lines, and turn four is Calamity Corner and wall hits as well combined with glitches. But this is a track that's pretty dynamic. You can go low, you can go high, but usually the low line really prevails. So the first yellow's out here at Charlotte. Marty Johnson will bring them down pit road and in my opinion here Bradley this is going to be a situation where you want four tires. Definitely wanting four tires because they give you more better, better track position. And if you t you could take a gamble of two tires, but you're gonna fall up, fall back very easily here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Plus, if I think that they might, I think they were already able to make it past stage one, but uh, they might want to risk it and take four tires just in case they don't. They would be good to stage one the entire way because remember the uh, fuel window is about 30 to 35 laps. It is a four tire stop. Remember Johnson's got pit stall number one. In fact, the stalls are in order. The 12 will win the race off pit road. Second goes to Cody Smart. Third, John Andrews. A good battle for fourth in the race off. That's Christian Vargas and Luke Rainey. Denton sixth, Gardner seventh, Fitzwater eighth. Downey 9, and I think Gretton just got 10th. It may have been Turner instead. The first yellow flag's out. We got some contact between Steve Morgan and Neil Clifford. Charlotte, a pretty narrow pit road, though. Should mention that, too. First yellow, though, out for Casey Nanico. Let's see what happens. So in the back of the pack, that's nearly a five-wide situation at Charlotte, and Stapleton just turns the 51. Nanico gets into the wall. Is that Webb behind as well that got a piece of it, too? Yes, it was. Little... Last points race winner from two weeks ago at Martinsville. We have an onboard with him, but let's uh, show it to you in real time. Coming off a of turn two, you're going to see an almost five wide situation with the 51, the 42, and others. As the 51 gets turned, he was on the outside, and the six was also involved as you see the smoke on the back straightaway. The is out in the race as we're almost ready to go back to racing, but first, here are some onboards from the back straightaway. Here's the Oscar Mayer on board with Brian Webb. Nowhere to go, pretty much. No room to make the pass down low. He got on the bricks, though, as much as he could, and you can see Webb's got some front end damage. Comes in fifth in the standings. First yellow is out. We get ready for the restart with Marty Johnson leading. Down the wall! Back in there! A massive accident! Oh, and the wall! Indianapolis. This hallowed ground owes you nothing. From the fast speeds to the even faster wrecks and everything else in between. To win this race needs more than any other. Today, 33 drivers accept the challenge of racing 100 laps at over 220 miles per hour. But in order to be a champion, first, they must survive.
the 2020 NOFSRL Indianapolis 250 begins now. Welcome back to Charlotte Motor Speedway. We get ready for the first restart of the day in the Coca-Cola 600 for a spin involving Casey Nanico. Steve Morgan suffered some damage on pit row there trying to get that car back out, out as soon as possible for the restart. But we can tell you though he's currently in the last position two laps down after some contact on pit road. We rack them and stack them up once again. Single file restart everyone except for Steve Morgan on the lead lap. Marty Johnson, the race leader. Cody Smart is second. John Andrews, third. Luke Rainey, fourth. Christian Vargas, fifth. Colin Denton, sixth. Johnny Garner, seventh. Zachary Fitzwater, eighth. Gatlin Downey, ninth. Jesse Turner is tenth. Stuart Grant in eleventh. Justin Zidel, twelfth. Brian Ferris, thirteenth. Ethan Hoffman is fourteenth. Alex Lozano, fifteenth. Eric Monaco, sixteenth. CJ Williams, seventeenth. Tyler Marco, eighteenth. Benny Watson is nineteenth. And Matthew Logan rounds out the top 20. So Johnson will bring the field into the restart zone for the first time today. Up to the gears they go at Charlotte Motor Speedway once again. Looks it's like, like the East Grove restarts here, but Downey looks like he's going to make the first move here. That's the challenge for 8th position. Stuart Gratton will go with him in the 41. No one making a move though in the top 5. Someone's got to figure something out. Cody Smart's going to try and challenge for the, fir for the first lead change of the day. Everyone goes with him. No one goes with Johnson on the top side of the track. Move Cody Smart up to the front at Charlotte. Fords are doing a good job as well. Currently 1-2-3, but Luke Rainey may change that up. He's looking for third on Johnson. Coming out of turn number two, it's the 10 of Cody Smart with the seven right in his tire, 17 right in his tire tracks. As you see, Marty Johnson looking to the inside to gain two, but uh, Cody Smart's going to shut the door on uh, 12. Johnson takes second spot away. Luke Rainey could be falling back to fifth. Colin Denton currently to its inside. We take you on board from the left side of the 15. Let's off the gas and just lets him go by. He should be able to transition to the inside, which he does. Now Johnson back on that rear bumper of Cody Smart. Does he try the inside for the lead? Yes, he does. The Daytona 500 winner looking to win another crown jewel event in the new Era Cup Series. Remember, when he won the 500, that was Johnson's first win since season number one. Probably the feel-good moment of the season so far. And you love to see it for him. Here comes Denton. He already passed Andrews. Now looks for second on Smart. One, two, three, four. All Mustangs at the front. On the back straight away. The 38 is going to try and look to the inside. But the 12 is a little bit too far out for him to get underneath him and pass him. It's Fords. One, two, three. As Cody Smart shuffles back to fifth. As you see, I believe that is the 15 of Luke Rainey up in the fourth position. As you have another huge pack of cars being led up by Brian Ferris. Johnny Gardner and the three of Eric Monaco and points that's, leader. Yeah, that's for six out there, Bradley. Let's take you from the visor cam with CJ Williams. Currently drafting with all star winner Eric Monaco. Gardner will shut the door on him. Keep that spot away. We've got coming to eight laps to go, but the yellow's out once again. Oh, this could be a big wreck here. It is. That's Marco in the 48, Eli Bright in the 8, Neil Clifford with damage. That may have been the only three cars involved. This looked like an accident in turn number three. Yes, it was. So the second yellow of the 600 is out with Johnson out in front. Looks like those were the only three cars, Marco and Bright. I think they're going to be done for the day after that accident. So what do you do here? Do you come on in for and top off and uh, go for four more tires here, Bradley? I think you want to um, save the... I think you want to come in and get, get fuel. I don't think you want to get tires because... Well, you might because it's 2X, but if you're going to do that, I think you should take um, left side since it's more... It wear off more quickly than the right sides do. But I think it's up to the drivers and what their crew chiefs want how the car will handle what their decision is. Remember, Johnson's got a big advantage because he's got pit stall number one. 
that could be a factor in the race off pit road. Denton's stuck in the middle of pit road. These are two tire stops here, I believe. Denton's going out. Andrews is going out. John's saying it's going to be close here for the race off pit road. It's going to Denton, I believe. No, they're saying Johnson got it. They are saying Johnson wins the race off pit road. I don't know about that. But let's see, focus on the main issue here. Our yellow flag is out in the 600 for Tyler Markle. And you see Lozano makes some contact with Benny Watson. You see Markle's already called it a day. So, so Perez just drove it in too deep and got into Markle. That's usually a rookie mistake. Remember, it was Perez's first ever start in the New Era Cup Series. He comes down into traffic. Wait for Clifford and Bright right there. Some hard shots. Nanako gets some more damage too. Brian Webb makes a good save. Got a little bit loose trying to miss this wreckage there. But tough break for Tyler Markle in the 48. Let's show you another angle. All right, so Perez is going to drive it in too deep and just tap the 48. And then you're just going to see the 8 coming hard. And another hit for the Nanako. And that's the second wreck Nanako is in. But a hard hit for the 48 of Tyler Markle and the 8 of Eli Bright. Air days will most likely be done here at Charlotte early on. Yellow, yellow is out. Let's get ready for the restart. Four laps to go in stage number one when we take the restart. Steve Morgan lines up on the inside line. He remains to uh, one lap down now, rather. Tyler Markle, Neil Clifford, and Eli Bright all were in that wreck, and they are done for the day. Marty Johnson restarts as the leader. Colin Denton second. John Andrews third. Brian Ferris fourth. Johnny Garner fifth. Cody Smart sixth. Eric Monaco seventh. Luke Rainey, 8th, Justin Zido, 9th, Zachary Fitzwater, 10th. Colin Denton, we just heard him on the radio, was complaining to race control, saying that he should be the leader, but Steve McDonald, the man that is the referee for all this, thought otherwise. Johnson brings him in the restart zone. Now, remember, he's at a disadvantage because he's got Morgan to his inside, who is still running at full power, but Johnson got a better restart than him. He should cut down low. That's a little bit tight going into turn one. But Johnson makes the prevail, and Andrews and Denton battle for second position. Here comes Brian Ferris in the 20 car as well. As well as the 17 of John Andrews, as the 12 is going to find himself on the high lane, leaving the um, bottom lane open for the 17. It is a lapped car, and just getting his lap back, which could hold up the leaders here and infect some guys who are trying to go for position. Andrews goes to the point, but here comes Ferris, the two-time winner this season, comes in ninth in the standings. He's already got two wins at Atlanta and Talladega, running in second, was looking inside on Andrews for a moment, but couldn't get it to work. Denton goes to third, Johnson and Garner side-by-side -side for fourth position. Andrews leads this lap of the line, but here comes Ferris, puts the block on Denton. Here we go, three wide for the lead with two to go in stage one. You heard it all in there. Gonna oh! Make a bit. Andrews got the wall. Rubs it in one and two. That's going to slow him down a lot. And even that low line too. Ferris and Denton battle for the race lead here. And right now, if you're Steve Morgan, you want a yellow because you'll be back on the lead lap. But the way they're racing, they're asking for a yellow. Here comes Monaco inside on Garner for third position. This is the final lap in stage one of the 600. Don't count out Eric Monaco. He won the all-star race a, la a couple days ago, and he has a really strong number three car in this race. He might be able to sweep both races here at Charlotte this year. Denton's trying to get inside on Morgan to lap him, but Morgan shuts the door. Brian Ferris, that's not over yet for stage number one of the, all of the 600. It goes to Colin Denton. For Tad, it's going to go to Marty Johnson. By two one hundredths of a second. A good ending to stage number one. Now let's mention Eric Monaco as well. Remember he got that new era hat um, for winning the All Star race, and the new era cap he uh, he asked for is actually a six hundred hat. So I think that's actually pretty cool. Imagine if he wins the dang thing now. Anyway. Denton puts a lap on Morgan, but Brian Ferris, here he comes to the inside. Let's take you from the onboard of the Geico Chevy. Here he goes. He's trying inside. You just got to be patient if you're Ferris. Yeah, you really have to be patient here. All race to make up spots and get back to the lead. As you can see the onboard, the bumper cam, 
and between Gardner and um, uh, not Mendez. Yellow, not yellow, we got a yellow. Oh, this is a bigger one. Justy Turner, Daniel Voyles, Matt Tuck, Nanako with more damage, Gatlin Downey, Ethan Lewis. Third yellow is out. Four car, another pileup here, I believe, in turn number three and four. Yes, it um, was three and four. What have happened? It started on the back straightaways. You see the smoke near the back of the TV screen, on um, the huge TV screen on the back straightaway. As Lozano with damage, Perez with damage, Stapleton and Ryan, big wreck here. Probably about maybe five, seven cars were involved, if I were to guess. But Denton will bring the field down pit road. Be interesting to see what was the. Uh, Cause of issue there. A lot to digest uh, to begin stage number two. The third yellow in the Coca Cola 600. You'll expect a lot of yellows with it being, you know, a long race, obviously. So Denton will bring the field down pit road. Now, if we're thinking right now, if this race does go caution free to the end, this is probably going to be a two stop strategy. But with all the yellows, you never know what happens, and you want those four fresh tires, guaranteed. It's been a while since I believe this track has been uh, repaid. So Denton looking to win the race off pit row, but it's going to go to Dio Rossello in the nine. Oh, man, he was, he's was he been quiet all day. I think he went a different strategy. Two tires, Denton goes four, Ferris third, Morgan fourth, Zydell fifth, then Hoffman, Monaco, Garner, Allen, and Rainey, who's got some front-end damage to that 15 now. Let's see what brought out the third yellow in the Coca-Cola 600. Okay. So we'll show this first in real time. Out of turn number two, see some cars get loose. Perez and Downey, they get into the inside wall and back into traffic with some hard shots. We'll show you the super slow-mo cam, but in turn three, track is blocked, pretty much. And Perez with another incident between another car. He's coming in between eight, um, the 52, uh, I believe, Gatlin Downey, that is. Yep. He's going to send him to the inside. Don't know if the he hit the wall or came they back did. up and um, came back up because of that, but he got into Matt Tuck, 93, got into the 88, who break checked the 43, 22 with some hood damage, 47 made it through, but and no, he did not. The 32, everybody mainly from the back on from this wreck was involved. You see Stapleton. Watch Look at Benny old. Watson. Look at Benny Watson on the inside. Just miss it. Holy cow. We may have some onboards to watch here. We'll watch Igor Barreto's onboard. Then we'll get back to green. Now these guys are in the back of the pack. We'll watch these drivers. Ooh, Barreto hit the 93, but I think that's just cosmetic damage. So a seven-car incident brings out the third yellow. We'll be right back for the restart. Back here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway underneath the third yellow. For a big wreck, seven drivers involved. Two drivers will line up for the inside line for this restart. Steve Morgan and Ethan Lewis. Diego Rossello gained a few spots. I believe he did a two-tire strategy over four. He will be the race leader. Second, Colin Denton. Third, Brian Ferris. Fourth, Justin Zidell. Fifth, Ethan Hoffman. Sixth, Eric Monaco. Seventh, Johnny Garner. Eighth, Tristan Allen. Ninth, Luke Rainey with front end damage. And tenth, will be Zachary Fitzwater. Out of the race after that accident, Gatlin Downey, Jesse Turner, Casey Nanico, Matt Tuck, and Daniel Boyle. So five cars exit from the race after that one. So Rossello, the Richmond winner, the first rookie to win this season. We've had two rookies win, the second one being Igor Barreto. Morgan and Lewis, I believe they don't have any damage still. They'll bring the... Oh, good restart for Rossello. I think Morgan may have spun the tires going into turn number one. This could affect Colin Denton in the 34. And it does. Lewis slowed down a little bit. Remember, he was involved in the accident as well. I can tell you, by the way, Braden Perez has been called to the NASCAR... Or not the NASCAR hauler. The race has been called by race control to the hauler post race for a further discussion. Just to make sure that these, this is like non-intentional. Everyone understands it's his first cup start. But right now he's not really making friends. You gotta be safe and be clean. Ferris inside though on Denton for second position. 
as the pack still getting slowed up just a little bit from Ethan Lewis as they come off of turn number two. Ferris up to second spot and goes by Morgan. You can see the nine is getting away from Lee's uh, second on back, including Steve Morgan, because everybody's battling for position. This is going to help out the nine here on lap 34 out of 100, just over one quarter of the way through the Coca-Cola 600. Here comes Monaco inside. Not for position, though, because that's on Morgan. Remember, he's still a lap down in the race. Hoffman and Monaco battling. Don't look now, though. Here comes Fitzy in the four with teammate Allen as well, but he's stuck on the high side. That is exactly right. Fitzy's making moves up to the front here. He's got to get work past the three and the 13. Uh, the lapped car, the 13. He's right on the back bumper of the three. Of uh, That's Eric Monaco, all-star race winner. Currently running in the fifth position. Here's a challenge for second as well. Dunton looks inside. That's for the lead, actually. Ferris inside. Dunton block was trying to go down low for three wide. Ferris puts the block. Four tires are better than two. Don't look now. Here comes Zachary. He's going to try and make a move, but it's going to get blocked by the 34 of Colin Denton. Um, as you can see, the nine slipping up. I think he might have a problem with that machine. He might have to set up wrong after the um, uh, pit stop here. But as you can see, Fitzy making moves up towards the front. He might have a good, he might have a really good card for um, this race. He just has to catch up to the two-time winner here this season, Brian Ferris in the number 20 Craftsman Toyota. He's won at Charlotte before the All-Star race last year. Jonathan Logan, meanwhile, he won the segment one of the Open last week. Canal takes the second spot away from Fitzwater. Take you on board with the number four machine just behind the car lane off of Logan. He's actually going to be tomorrow in a private test session. He'll be testing the new next-gen ICR mod. That's the international competitive racing mod that Armory Digital released back on uh, last Saturday. And he is the first driver to test it. It's going to be a, a private session at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. So what that means is he will be watching footage of his car testing. And then he will provide a statement in the Discord chat afterwards. There will be several test sessions of the next-gen car scheduled uh, for 2020. Hopefully by the end of the season we will have packs, uh, big packs, or multiple cars testing at one. So you're looking forward to this uh, ICR mod, Bradley? A lot of series are using it. Yeah, I, I'm, yes, I'm iffy on it. Um, I like it. It's just the design. It's not my favorite. Um, I, they did a really good job putting the, putting it together. But as you can see, going for second place is the on the outside. But honestly, I think it's a good thing for motorsports. But I think that some series will prevail very good with this mod and others think they'll make it this far. Um, I know some, you know, I'm in some series that really I don't think will prevail at all in, with the new mod. And honestly... Oh, the trouble! John Andrews hard into the inside wall! Luke Rennie collected, same with Patrick Smith. Benny wants it as well. I think he gets a piece of it too. And he does. Fourth caution is out. Oh my goodness. Luke Rainey pounded the inside retaining wall. Caution is out once again. Brian Ferris brings them to the line. Oh, man. Patrick Smith, he is destroyed. Luke Rainey, we saw him pound that inside wall. You can't really see it from our perspective how much, but if you go in his onboard, the hood is destroyed on the 15. Turn two once again becomes Calamity Corner and triggers a wreck down the entire back straightaway. Brian Ferris will bring the field down pit road once again. There's ten laps to go in stage number two. So we'll have to see what these drivers do. Likely four tires and Sunoco race fuel. As we were mentioned as well with the ICR mod, a lot of ways you can customize the car, so there will be many more manufacturers into the sport, many more tire suppliers, many more fuel suppliers. It will be open to a lot of people, and I, I cannot wait when the New Era Cup Series heads into this next season. We can tell you, though, Fitzwater, by the way, will be uh, testing the um, a Dodge 
um, with uh, Dunlop tires and Shell Racing fuel. For the race off pit road, meanwhile, you can give that to Brian Ferris. Second, Jonathan Logan. Third, Zachary Fitzwater. Fourth, Allen. Fifth, Monaco. Sixth is Hamill. Seventh, Johnson. Contact! This is a big one on pit road. Zach Ryan. A lot of damage. I saw Mitchell Collins collected. Johnny Garner still having issues getting out. He's going to lose a lot of spots because of that. I think I saw Mitchell Collins as well. Colin Denton spin my mistake. But let's see what happened first, though. That brought out the yellow. So, out of turn number two, it's a three-wide situation. Andrews just gets tied up into Hoffman and Luke Rainey just way loose. Oh, man, what a shot there. And then Andrews comes back up into traffic into Patrick Smith. There's Benny Watson getting a piece of it as well. Four-car accident down the back straightaway in the Coca-Cola 600. Let's take this from real time. So you're going to see the 17 and the 15 hit hard into the inside walls. They're going to come back up. Stapleton got involved. The 14 and the 93, I believe, got involved as well. But Benny Watson has damage. The 17 likely is going to be out of this race. He was running up front. This will take your breath away right here. Oh, oh, man. That may be the hardest hit Luke Rennie's ever taken in this series. Car on fire as well. Now let's see what happened on pit road. So coming out of pit road, Garner hits his teammate. And watch Collins here. Nowhere to go. Oh, more damage to Johnny. Ryan luckily gets his car repaired. Then you see Colin Denton in the 34. Perez is stuck. Trying to see what happened here. Collins... He hits Seidel. These drivers are having so much trouble on the exit of Pit Road. We've never seen that in previous seasons. Trying to get that car. I don't know what he's trying to do here. Oh, car just blew up. Denton, I think, is done. Oh, got Stapleton as well. Oh, you hate it for Nathan. Yellow flag, <laughs> though. Back out. Race leader is... Brian Ferris. As we get ready for the restart once again here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, Brian Ferris won the race off pit road. He is the, excuse me, he is the current race leader. Let's reset the field for you. He's leading Jonathan Logan second, Zachary Fitzwater third, Tristan Allen fourth, Eric Monaco fifth, Derek Hamill sixth, Marty Johnson seventh, CJ Williams eighth, Diego Rossello ninth, Mitchell Collins is tenth. Out of the race after that wild wreck. You see Johnny Garner gets his car back on track. He's a lap down. Colin Denton is out of it. Same with Luke Rainey and Patrick Smith. There'll be six laps to go in stage number two when Brian Ferris gets them across the line. Back to green. Remember, he's got to deal with Morgan and Lewis. They get equal restarts just like the top two. Could this help out Fitzwater or Allen? Hamill makes the first move going into turn number one on Eric Monaco. That's for fifth on the track. Allen inside on Fitzwater. Remember our first take of this. Lap traffic caused a huge wreck at around the same point of this race. Fitzwater up to third. Allen's looking for fourth. Now Jonathan Logan trying to take third position away. And he's going for the lead. Fitzwater for second. They were almost three wide across the stripe. Like you said, Marty, here comes Fitzy. He's got the edge, but Steve Morgan's going to throw a block on the number four. That's going to slow down the four, but can he regain that strength? He's going to have the inside advantage here. He might get a run. With now remember, if you're Morgan, do you want a yellow to come out right now? It's all three wide for second. Logan and Fitzwater get tied. Here comes Derek Hamill and CJ Williams off of four. Him will move to four out of the way a little bit there as he that would send him up high. Hamill and here comes CJ Williams up to the third spot looking oh, inside. Oh man! Hamill, Hamill drove it in deep oh, in the turn number one and two. So race leader is Brian Ferris. You still see the lap down car of um Oh! 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 Hang on a second, there we go, right now! Zidell is around, same with Collins, Marty Johnson, Edwin Mendez, Ethan Hoffman, everyone else. Oh, Lozano! With the Arca breaks, the yellow is out once again. That's going to do it for stage number two. 
You saw that coming. Now is Morgan back on the lead lap? No, he's not. Now remember, these five drivers, they gotta be careful though. They gotta slow up for the pace car. Or else they could get called for pulling up the pit. Oh my goodness, this is gonna change everything. The top four are gonna get penalized for pulling up to pit. Because they were ahead of the pace car. What can they do? That that's a judgment call though. Oh man, I'm not sure. The pace car was just at slow speed. Some drivers will stay out here and the lead will go to Christian Vargas. And do you know what that means? Christian Vargas just stole stage number two. Yes, he did. Christian Vargas, those guys had a tough break coming down the pit lane. They didn't know that that could happen to him, but it looks like it did. And, I mean, you never know what can happen here at Charlie Motor Speedway. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Johnson has called it a day in the number 12. Let's see what happened. This is our aerial shot. Oh, Logan! Logan was coming down pit row. I think everyone just had an accordion effect. Let's rewind that. Was it Logan, Vargas, and Allegheny tight in an accordion fact? But, yeah, these three drivers slow down. It's four wide. And Zydell just gets into Hoffman and Collins. They're trying to save it. Ethan Lewis spins the one and the 19. Mendez rear ends the 12 of Marty Johnson. Hoffman more damage. Everyone trying to miss it. Luckily, not that many cars were involved. About four or five. And there's Lozano. And, oh, Betty Watson just misses the 88. That's a wild sequence of events that's like three Gibbs cars as well involved Bradley let's see it in real time you're gonna see the 21 come down pit road and they're just gonna get a four wide situation two cars with teammates here as everybody tries to get it you get a 11 gets head on and crash with the 12 and then the 88 and the one and go up in the air Benny Watson almost missing it and he has a lot of damage um as a lot of these cars will be taken out Mitchell Collins uh, he was running pretty good in points I believe last time I checked Third in points. Now remember, this is a this is a this is an NR2003 rule, not an NOF SRL rule. If you pit in, if you come into pit in front of the pace car, you will be black flagged and have to come in for a pass through on the restart. Fitzwater, Williams, Hamill, Morgan, and Ferris did that, and that is huge. And Christian Vargas says, hey, you know what? I'll take the playoff points and the bonus points, too. So this is the final lap of stage number two. We are about to reach halfway in the 600, and Christian Vargas will win stage number two. Three drivers, though, did not pit, but you'll have about four drivers, four to five drivers that will have to come in to serve a penalty, we believe, for pulling up to pit. After the wreck, we've got 22 cars that are on the lead lap. 25 of them remain on the track. So we just lost around half the field in the 600. Christian Vargas, the leader. Matthew Logan, second. Brian Webb, third. John Andrews with now a lot of rear end damage is currently fourth. So four drivers stayed out there. Brian Ferris is fifth. Zachary Fitzwater, sixth. Tristan Allen, 7th, Derek Hamill, 8th, Carter Frieza, 9th, and Igor Barreto is 10th. Zach Ryan, 11th, CJ Williams is 12th, Eric Monaco, 13th, Cody Smart, 14th, Benny Watson, 15th, Jonathan Logan, 16th, Nathan Stapleton, 17th, Ethan Hoffman, 18th, Diego Rossello, 19th, Braden Perez, 20th, Stuart Grant, 21st, and Mitchell Collins is 22nd. Still a lot of cars with a chance to win it all, though. We have reached the second half now of the 600. Pace car will Mario. pull in. Now let's see what tire strategy plays into this. Go ahead, Bradley. I'm going to make a point right here before we go back racing is that some of these lapped cars near the back with heavy damage could play a factor in how who's going to win this race. You see back going to the green, uh, green flag racing back here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Three cars on the inside line. The top two really got a good jump. Brian Ferris is trying to get oh, ahead of these uh, slower cars as soon as possible. But it's just going to stack them all up as Vargas and Logan try to pull away. Now we got to watch Ferris and these other drivers closely. Do they come in this time? And does it stack the field up? The answer, yes. Morgan serves his penalty. Ferris, yep. They all had to come in. 
That's an unfortunate situation. Fitzwater, though, staying in the back of the pack. I don't know if he served his penalty during the yellow flag. But how about, look at this. Look who's in third. Tristan Allen, his first New Era Cup start in who knows how long. Since I think season four. And he's running third. He is having a good day in his return. And he's trying to catch these leaders as well off of four. He's trying to run close, but look at the gap he's put up on them. About nearly two seconds because of the slower traffic. Now let's look at the best battle on track here. Jonathan Logan and Cody Smart. That is for six. As you can see, those that got penalized early in the race now coming on out for their pit road mishap. Or their group, I should say. Rossello inside on Smart for 7th on the track. Let's take you on board with him. You're going to see battling for position with the number 10. He's going to get the run into the corner, but I don't think Smart will be able to get the run out of the corner as he's falling back a lot here as Rossello is going to be able to take that position. Climbing through the field a little bit. Um, if I'm correct, he did not have to come in for the black flag. I don't think he was the, a black flag R. So you see a lot of cars with damage back here, and see you see Fitzy coming off the pit road, um, coming on the back straightaway from yep, his. He had to come in too. So everyone has served their penalty for pulling up to pit. Rossello's coming. He's now looking for six on Eric Monaco. He's trying to, and now he's, he could get Jonathan Logan next lap. Don't be surprised if this kid here has the best car on the track. I think he does. I do too, but it's all about who's going to be able to pull it off the night. Could some of those cars with the penalties earlier in the race, um, a couple of laps ago, come back up from the back and come up to the front. But we might see more wrecks here tonight and see more cars get taken out. And I should add, it. I don't mean to interrupt you here, Bradley, but uh, we just had a position change. Tristan Allen's taken second. Carter Friesen is looking for third on Matthew Logan. Ethan Lewis is coming in as well to spoil the party. It's going to get good, and I think you can see Tristan Allen challenge Christian Vargas shortly. The gap is going down. Now he gained a quarter of a second that last lap. He's, he's on his way to the lead. That 98 Ford Mustang is fast, and it is pulling away from the guys behind him as well as we see four wide down the coming Man, right Man, yeah, I was looking at that too down the back straight away. Some of the slower traffic battling for position as well. A points later, CJ Williams was also involved in that one. He is. He's currently running in the 21st position right now. Rossello's gotten by Matthew Logan for fourth position. Two turn. Oh, Logan! Oh, Allen! Allen! Allen's got a problem! Oh, no! He was running in second, and he's got an issue. We're hearing a tire went down on the 98. Ah, oh, what a tough break. He was having a great return, but Scott but now has to come down pit road. Ah, oh, you hate to see it. Oh! Vargas got turned! Oh, man! Get to the apron, get to the apron, everyone get to the apron. Oh no, CJ Williams, Ethan Hoffman collected. Yellow once again. Vargas was the leader, by the way. I think a tire just went out on him. And this should give the lead to Friesen, and it does. And I want to make a point here. The 98 was on pit road. This is likely going to hurt him really badly here. We'll have to see, but remember, Vargas was leading last time by something happened to him. I don't know what it was. We'll take a look. But first, most likely we got these drivers coming in. We'll likely have one more stop after these, this, this round of pit stops here. But we'll just have to wait and see. There's Friesen. He comes down. Lewis has to stay out, obviously. Same with Garner because they are a lap down. Same with Morgan. And I believe same with Derek Hamill, too. See if anybody has problems here on pit road. As you see, the leader, the 37, is going to line up behind the 21 and the 9. Barreto is behind him in his pit stall. Right. Here's the because of the trial, and you see a lot of damage from the 96. 
that is uh, Matthew Logan on the Coca-Cola Toyota. Oh, for... contact! Oh, this is going to be close to the race on Piro. This could go to Rossello. Now remember, Friesen came in 15th in the playoff standings. Only two points above the cutoff, so a win would be necessary right now. Rossello does beat Friesen out. Let's see the yellow flag and what happened. Oh, he, I think he, oh, something happened. Something broke on the car like the engine let go. And Matthew Logan just gets into him. I think, I think he blew up and there was oil all over the track. And CJ Williams is just slipping. It's just all it's just slippery all over there. And there you saw CJ Williams get a piece of it. Let's see the visor cam from him. Onto the apron. Oh, he didn't know where Logan was going pretty much. On board with Carter Friesen. And remember, Vargas did not pit on the last round. Yeah, engine just let go. When he goes by, takes the lead. Rossello, though, will be the new leader when we get back to green. Back here at Charlotte Motor Speedway as we get ready for the restart. We have about 36 laps to go when we take the green this time by. No, Tristan Allen is not the leader. Remember, he had a flat tire earlier. Came in for four fresh Goodyear's. He is the last car on the lead lap, so he got the wave around. Diego Rossello is the race leader. Carter Friesen second. Eric Monaco third. Jonathan Logan fourth. And Cody Smart is fifth. A lot of cars on the inside line because of a penalty earlier on in the race for pulling up to pit. But let's see how it affects. It shouldn't affect Rossello or Allen because the two guys in front, they've got damage. Hoffman and Stapleton. 14 cars, though, on the lead lap. That's typical for the 600. you got to have patience, and you got to have endurance. So, Allen, the control car for the restart, but Rossello, though, the race leader. Back to green they go. Allen, a good jump. Same with Rossello. Same with Friesen. Monaco spun the tires. Gets by, though, with no issues. Carter Friesen, remember, almost won this race last season. However, though, final lap, ran out of gas at the end while trying to pass for the win. And now is a chance to take the lead from Diego Rossell. Let's go on board. You can see there's 11. Here we uh, go. I mean, he's going to set a pick from the 9 and for the 37, but I believe the 98 will shut the door. No, maybe no, he might might keep it open here on the back straightaway that's going to hold up the nine i think you might have a new race later here the 37 not just yet because rossello had the draft down the back straightaway from allen now here comes freezing now if you're allen you want a yellow badly could put you yes, back you on the lily lap and back in the race yes you do but you're gonna have to if you're gonna get a yellow you're gonna have to restart the tail of the long of, of the line here and that's gonna put you behind all these lap cars so it's gonna be hard for you to get all your laps back. Carter Friesen goes to the point. Here come Monaco and Logan. They've entered the battle as well for the race lead. Four cars under a blanket battling it out in a five-car pack. Monaco, the all-star winner, currently running in third. He's having a good race so far. Has kept his nose clean all day long. Here comes Rossello inside here, Bradley, for the lead. Ooh, tried to slide up in front of the 37. Couldn't do it just yet, though. One driver, I think, is just being patient and playing it safe. Right now, it's almost three wide for second. The 10 car of Cody Smart running in fifth. Just right now, trying to keep his nose clean. He has, to have, he has a feeling these five cars here will wreck, and he could take the lead. He's just being patient, but don't be too patient because, I mean, he got a nice gap, though, on sixth place driver Stuart Grant right now. A lot of cars, though, separating because of the lap traffic, though. Logan and Monaco battle for third. Meanwhile, not where Allen wants to see. Rossello and Friesen go to the inside. Meanwhile, the 21 and the 3 remain side by side for third position. Monaco with today. It should plummet him up the standings on the playoffs format. But right now, remember, he came in only one point below in 17. So he was the first man out currently running in fourth spot. 
Remember when we took the green, there were about 35 laps to go. They were, if this race does go green to the end, it would be a one-stop race and could be possibly fuel mileage. Logan trying to figure out a way to get by Tristan Allen. Nothing working, though, just yet. Remember, he had a faster car than the top two on the restart. Remember that the toe he got off of, or uh, him and Monaco got that toe off of Freeza was coming in very, very closely. And now he's just losing some ground to the 90. I think Allen has got some uh, Warner tires. Remember, he didn't pit on that last uh, caution because he had that flatter tire earlier on in that green flag run when he was running second. The smart thing to do is to, for the 98 is to let the 21 go by. You're not going to make it back. I don't think without a caution, you're not going to make it back up to the front of these two. Back. So I think you should just let the he should let the um, uh, 21 and the three go. Ryan Ferris not in the battle though. He's currently running in 15th, a lap down. He's got fresher tires as well. It looks like he's going to get by the 10 of Cody Smart with no problem. Logan and Monaco continue to battle for third challenge for the lead. They'll freeze it inside on Russell. Oh, he's got it. And we're going to turn number three and four, the 37 new leader, the 37 of uh, Carter Friesen over the non Diego Rossello coming to the one on lap number 74. Two laps to go here in stage number three as you're going to see the... Yes, um, you are right. Nine working in the inside of the 37 on a crossover move. Can the uh, 37 do the same thing back to him? I think Russell. the 21 is closing in on him. Rossello's got a few playoff points from earlier this season, especially with that win he got at Richmond. Remember, last year this was Carter Friesen's race uh, that got away from him. He was running second at the white flag and a chance to win it. Now he's going for a stage victory. Final lap in stage three. He has the inside advantage, but the nine could come out of the high line with a good run. The 37 needs to walk the inside lane, so he can't do a crossover. He needs to execute here, but the nine has the outer, um, the outside advantage. Nine's going to let off here into the corner. He's going to probably fall back in line since... But, he's going to give uh, it to him. Carter Freeze and, needs the playoff points badly, and he's going to win stage number three of the Coca-Cola 600. Big question, though. Who comes out in 10? Remember, 10th spot, way, way back. It's John Andrews currently in 10th, but it could be Braden Perez. They're coming off a turn four right now. And it does go to Perez. Perez takes 10th spot. So good drive for him. Wow, it looks like, though, that six cars are not damaged when you think that it's not really six cars that are damaged. There are more cars that are a lap down that don't have damage. Brian Ferris, Tristan Allen, Zachary Fitzwater, Derek Hamill, C.J. Williams, Ethan Lewis, maybe Johnny Garner as well. But yeah, this, once again, remember, this is the longest race the NOFSRO New Era Cup Series has every year. This is just a game of patience and endurance. Who comes out on top? Cody Smart and Tristan Allen, I think, have planned a strategy. They're trying to work together. He's come a little bit closer to Jonathan Logan and Eric Monaco. Well, but it could be the fact, though, you know, that they're staying side by side. They're losing momentum. Smart is gaining momentum. You want to take this into action. They're catching up the lap traffic here. I think that they might want to For the think lead. about... As you see, for the lead, it's the 37 losing this lead over the number nine. As I was going to say, that um, you might want the drivers might want to think about when they're going to pit if it goes for a green flag run the whole entire rest of the way, because we know that we're going to have to. They're going to have to make one stop. These drivers came in with about 40 laps to go, so likely about five to seven laps to go. These drivers come in. Now, do you maybe possibly short pit here? Because right now we've got 22 laps to go. They'd be good to go on fuel no matter what, and they'd have the fresher tires. I honestly think that some of the lead, like first couple lead lap cars might want a short pit. Because, be, why is because that they might be able to catch back up once if the leaders have a problem or if there's a caution when they're already back out and they, the leaders have to pit again. Not again, I mean, um, sorry about that. I mean, uh... I lost my train of thought there. We for all a understand second. what Back you're to trying to say there, Bradley. But look at this now. We've got a three car battle for third spot. Monaco gets by Logan. Cody Smart trying to spoil this battle as well. 
He's saying, I want to tangle for third position, too. 20 laps to go here in the Polo 600. The longest race as we're catching up to lap traffic. I think that the nine coming... Well, no, they're going to go too oh, wide. Oh, this is going to get good. Ethan Hoffman and Stapleton are battling for a position. Friesen, what do you do here? You got to be patient and stay back. Rossello stays back as well. Friesen, oh man, he almost bumped Stapleton out of the way. Rossello's yeah. going to get by lap traffic with no problem. Almost makes contact with Ethan Hoffman. He's got the lead. Friesen should have definitely come down on the nine right there. He had enough space just by a tad, but I think he could have held on to the lead and figured out how to pass the 18 um, coming into turn number three. And look at the pack behind him. They're catching oh, up. Oh, three wide. Three wide for a third possession. These guys are going to have greater trouble trying to get by Stableton and Hoffman. It could possibly cause a wreck. They got to figure this out ASAP. You see, there's a, key, a little bit of a pack here, including a couple of lap cars. The 21 is falling back a lot here. He's going to lose. Um, uh, he's not going to lose a spot to Fitzy, but Fitzy is a lapped car. Yeah, but he's, he's, he's got fresh retires. Oh, yeah, there it is! Stapleton gets turned and takes Smart out! Oh, my goodness, and this changes everything in the 600. Johnny Garner puts him on two wheels. Lewis gets by. Well, 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 this just changed everything. You will not see green flag spot stops in the end. Oh, brother. You oh have traffic yuck. That's all you gotta say. You know a little bit of something about that. Yes, you did. Back in the Chick flashback to Chick-fil-A Cup Series action at Dover. Bradley, you were actually leading. Going to be the provisional leader after the cycle of green flag pit stops. And we had a big wreck in turn three at the Monster Mile. And there go your chances. I was in the booth for that. I could not believe what I saw as well. But here we go for what could be the money stop right here. I think right now, if you're these front runners, you want to go four tires. If you're a back runner, you want to have a good chance at winning. Maybe go for two tires. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. The leaders, they don't want to um, hit anybody here. They want to come out you clean. you got to be perfect, absolutely. Yeah. And if, you, if like, the 37 gets hit by the, the 21 hits 37, oh, they're Wait. not going to hit anybody. But I think the 9 still going to hold it off pit road since they came off equally. Perfect yeah, stops for Rossello and Freeze, and that is just what they wanted. Who's going to come out in third, though, is the main question. That will go to Eric Monaco. Jonathan Logan comes out in fourth. And Stuart Grant in fifth. You feel for Cody Smart, though. He was having probably the best day this season. But had nowhere to go because of lap traffic. We're going to take this in real time first off, Bradley Ream. All right. So you're going to see a three-wide situation. This 42 is going to come down on the three, and it's going to send him in the outside wall. Cody Smart, nowhere to go. Um, and then you're going to see the uh, two uh, come full speed into the 10, sending him upside down and on the two wheels. Do you notice Christian Vargas? I think he's a lap down or two, but he is back in the race after a mechanical problem earlier on, or uh, which he was involved in a wreck. So don't count him out if he's on the lead lap either. So from the super slow-mo cam, yeah, lap traffic. They were just three wide. Someone had to give. Monaco didn't want to give because he was battling for a position. He, wa he was greedy going for third. Stapleton just cuts down in front. I think that's on the 42. Definitely on the 42 because uh, he sl came down on the three here. But, I mean, he did, no, he did no purpose of being near the three or coming down on the three. He should have stayed high. And then just wait for the shot that Johnny Garner takes he here. You'll see it in a few seconds from now. But this has really not been the season Cody Smart. There it is. Oh, man. Worst part. Driver's side puts Cody actually on two wheels. Doesn't go on his roof, luckily. And Lewis does get collected as well. So about a uh, three to four car incident here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Takes out a few more cars in the 600. We get ready for what could be the money restart. The final double file restart of the day happening. Not the final restart of the, of the day right now in the Coca-Cola 600. 
We have got about 14 laps to go. It's been a crazy day so far, but I don't think it's over yet. These drivers will go no pit stops to the end. They are good to go. Diego Rossello, the race leader. Carter Friesen in second. They've had the two best cars all day. Eric Monaco looking to sweep. New Era Cup Series All-Star Week and the 600. Jonathan Logan is third. Bra uh, Stuart Gratton runs fifth. Igor Barreto is in sixth. Brian Se Webb seventh. Zach Ryan eighth. John Andrews ninth. Braden Perez in his first ever start running in tenth position. So he's having a good day as well. Make your picks right now. Bradley R. Rescue, as we get back to green, who do you think's got it? I don't really know. I think that 21's going to get the victory today as we go back green flag racing. I think the 21 oh. shot. Yeah, may have jinxed it for him because he just spun the tires a little bit on that restart. But he's coming, though. He's coming. Ferris, though, and Allen stuck on the low line. This affects the top two. Don't count out Eric Monaco or Jonathan Logan yet. But they get the draft on the... Back straight away, and Rossello cuts down low. This could hurt the 37 at will. Here comes Monaco for second. Leading Allen goes numbers. to the inside. He wants to get back on the lead lap ASAP. I wouldn't blame him either. Right now, he probably it's too late Here to... Here comes Eric. Monaco's got to run. Monaco's got to run. Nope, he thinks second about it. And that's going to cost him to think second about it there. Because Friesen's got to run back on the inside. Oh, is there a yellow? Yes, there. Oh, Zach Ryan spins. No caution, though. He's on the apron. We stay green. That's an amazing call by race control. Coming to the line. 11 laps to go. Battle for the lead. Here comes Friesen inside. Battle for third. Logan inside on Monaco. Right now, the 20 of Carter. Um, uh, not Carter Friesen. That's uh, Ryan Ferris. Ferris really wants to see this happening in his rear view mirror. Right now, he just... He just wants to get the good run in. He's already down. He's got the lead lap back. But don't count out the 21 here or the th or anybody really on the lead lap of the top four. Um, Eric Mon Monaco, swept, um, who got the all-star victory, I think he's got a good shot. Um, but unless I think that the nine is in second in points. Well, with he the win, he could coming in. And if I recall correctly the way he's done today, he could end up as the points leader at the end of the day. Logan inside on Allen. That would put him one car closer to Carter Friesen. He is trying. He's going to get a push from Eric Monaco here. We got nine to go in the Coca-Cola 600. Carter Friesen trying to win the race that he came oh so close to winning last season. 21 of um, Jonathan Logan. He lost a little bit there. Is they're going to go too wide for position. I think that the um, Logan wants to really hold the inside line here. He has to do that to execute and catch up to the 37. And He's Monaco. And Monaco Rossello. Sorry there, Bradley. They lost some ground to Jonathan Logan. They're battling for third. Meanwhile, Carter Friesen's trying to pull away from all of this. Side by side for that third position. Rossello trying to look underneath. He's got the run in three. Ooh, Monaco drives it in deep that time. Not giving up yet. Seven to go. On board with the number nine of Diego Rossello here trying to work on the three and then trying to catch back up to the 21 and possibly the leader. But I think the 37 is gaining for on the um, getting away from the 21. Um, I think the 21, he's off the pace a little bit. As you see, the 9 getting a great run on him. He's going to need a yellow as quickly, though, because Rossello's coming. He wants second spot. Logan shuts the door, but now he goes high, says, let him go by. You're faster than me. I don't want to risk losing my car. In second place, it's now the 9 of Diego Rossello's. The 21 is high. This could give third to Eric Monaco if he can get a good run. As you see back there on um, out of turn two, more cars, but I, don't th I think really the top four has a good shot. It's like the only shot at winning. Um, unless a caution can come out in, you'll see a... Um, Five to go. Too late for a caution here. And now Logan inside on Rossell. That may have just given the win possibly to Carter Friesen. Unless Brian Ferris slows him down. There's no, none of his teammates are battling for second. 
but it's just getting dicey out there for the runner-up spot in the 600. The gap is increased to nine tenths of a second. Coming to the stripe, four laps to go. Four laps to go here in the Coca-Cola 600. You, you have the 37 leading the number nine second. Third place is the 21 of um, uh, Jonathan Logan. Jonathan Logan, yeah. And then you have three of it is Eric Monaco, all-star race winner, and I believe in it, it's the 41 is Stuart Gratton making a good run. It, it's the 77 at Igor Barreto, and then uh, seventh, it's I believe is the number I can't see that Six on the. Brian Well, but I'm gonna tell you something here. I don't think Jonathan Logan is gonna be too happy at you because I believe you had to check your notes all the time to know what his name is today, Bradley. <laughs> Yeah. Just messing with you there, though. They're battling for second. A yellow will end the race, though. Carter Friesen has increased the gap big time to over 1.4 seconds. Popsicle sticks up in the air this time for him. He's got two laps to go. Remember last season, flashback to this race. He was quiet all day. Made an amazing run, amazing charge to the front of the field. Out of turn two was behind Matthew Brown. Into turn three, he looked to the inside. Car ran out of gas at the end. And Matthew Brown won the Coca-Cola 600. This time, he comes to the white flag as the leader. One lap to go at Charlotte Motor Speedway for Carter Friesen. Friesen enters in the turn number one and two really cleanly running the inside line. He has to stay consistent. If a problem happens to his car, he ha he does not want to pit, although they're coming in fast. And they're in um, turn number three for the final time. He was 15th in the playoff standings coming in, but that was without a win. This time he sees his first win of the season. Carter Friesen sees the checkered flag and wins the longest race in the New Era Cup Series, the Coke 600. Rossello comes home second, Jonathan Logan third, Eric Monaco fourth, Stuart Grant in fifth, Igor Barreto takes sixth, Brian Webb seventh, and they're battling for eighth on back. CJ Williams finishes in 15th. You gotta look depending on the stage points as well. It's going to be close to figure out if we have a new play points leader or not. But congrats to Carter Friesen in the 37, the Canadian. Gets one today at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Half the field, though, luckily completed, took the checkered flag. Just over half the field. Everyone else, unfortunately, retired or, or had an accident in the race. But a good race, though, today at Charlotte. 100 laps, and Carter Friesen gets the job done, Bradley. Yeah, the Chevys were doing well. Um, Ford uh, Johnson had a good car early on. Um, and then I believe it was uh, Morgan got caught up in a wreck and, on pit road. And then we saw a mixture of different leaders here, including um, he almost had it at one point. Um, um, I'm trying to see who's on the list who made a big move here. Um, Benny Watson, I believe he had a, a lap somewhere where he was leading. Um, yeah, overall a good race today. A lot of, um, a lot of, uh, cost race cars to say, yeah. That's, that's yeah. normal usually for the Coca-Cola 600. But Carter Friesen, though, gets the job done. Right now he is in the playoffs, becomes the 11th different winner we have had this season we're gonna end it here early here i'll show you guys the points right after this clip because i'm kind of low on storage enough to free it on now bradley final thoughts on today great race overall a lot of cautions as i said um congrats to carter friesen and i think that diego rossello will have the points lead over the 24 of cj williams his teammate when this is all said and done you will see right now, though. So on behalf of Bradley Ream, I'm Marty Sakala. You've been watching the NOFSRL New Era Cup Series. We congratulate Carter Friesen on winning the longest race in the Cup Series. The we congratulate Carter Friesen on winning the longest race in the Cup Series, the Coca-Cola 600. Thank you all for joining us tonight. So long from Charlotte. <laughs>